So hello everyone and uh, welcome to this subtopic. Uh, we have already defined what is transportation, uh, what is a transportation problem, where we said that transportation involves the movement of goods and services from one or from several sources to different destinations in such a way that some functionality is optimized. For example, in a, such a way that we minimize cost or we maximize profits. Uh, we have defined several terms, like what is a basic feasible solution? What is a feasible solution? What is a non-degenerate basic feasible solution? And what is a degenerate uh, 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 solution? We, uh, we have said that Sorry, we have said that uh, there are three methods of solving uh, transportation problems, where we have the northwest corner cell method, we have the least cost cell method, and the Vogel's approximation method. Then uh, we also mentioned that there are two methods of optimizing uh, transportation solutions. Uh, we have the modified distribution method, or the MODI, MODI or the stepping stone method. So now we are discussing one of the methods of obtaining uh, the initial solution, and that is the Northwest corner cell method. So uh, we are going to illustrate that using this example here, where you are required to solve the following transportation problem. And this is a min minimization type of problem. As we mentioned earlier, transportation problems can either be minimization type or maximization type. So by default, uh, transportation problems are minimization type, but you can often get uh, problems that are of maximization type. So when you get a, 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 a data matrix like this one, we have the sources, like in this problem, we have four sources, and then we have destinations. And here we have three destinations. For every source, we have its supply capacity. So like uh, from source one, or source one is able to supply five units of the product. Source two is able to supply eight units. Source three is able to supply seven units, units and so on and so forth. Then the destinations have their demand. So destination one has a demand for seven units. Destination two has a demand for nine units. And destination three has a, has a demand of 18 units. So before you start solving this problem, you need to check whether it is balanced or not. And you do that by doing the row totals. So you take five plus eight plus seven plus 14. And you check, uh, you also do uh, the column totals. Um, the column totals are seven, nine, and 18. So if those two values are equal, we say that uh, the problem is balanced. Okay. Yeah, so we were saying that uh, the first thing you check whether the problem is balanced and you do that by checking whether the row totals is equal to the column totals. So when you do the row totals and the column totals for in our case, you realize that uh, these are balanced transportation problem and the total is 34. The row total is equal to the column total, which is 34. So once the problem is balanced, now you start the, pro the process of, um, of solving it. I've already shared the steps that are followed if you want to solve a transportation problem using the Northwest corner cell method. Basically, uh, when you talk about Northwest, uh, this, remind, this should remind you of uh, basic geography where this is called the north, this one is called uh, south, this is east, this is west. So you can add more points. So if you have another point there and another one there, this is usually called northeast. And this is called what? Southeast. This is uh, southwest. And this is what you call northwest. So the name comes from the cell, which is at this direction. And usually that is the cell, which is on the, the most top left corner. The most top left corner, that's the Northwest corner, the more Northwest corner cell. 
So that's how you determine where to transport first or where to allocate. So once you identify the cell, usually you, you can mark some, some space there or some square or some box inside that square. Then you indicate how many units should be transported to that particular uh, destination from that source. Already you know that from this source, we can get only five units. And this destination requires seven units. So between this number five and number seven, we allocate one, whichever is smaller between these two numbers. So you put five there. So you either put five or seven, whichever is smaller. So in this case, you put five. Then you subtract that value from this row total. So you take minus five there, and you also do minus five on the other side. You do minus five here, so minus five. So this means here you will get zero. You take five minus five. When you do minus five there, you get a two. So that destination still requires two more units. So either those two units will come here or here or here because the demand must be satisfied. So if any row or any column is satisfied, that is if it has a total supply of zero or total demand of zero, you delete it from your matrix. So in our case, we are going to delete row one because we have satisfied the supply. We have supplied all what we could produce from that source. So now we have a reduced matrix. So in the reduced matrix, you again work with the Northwest corner cell. In our case, this is the current Northwest corner cell, this one. And in that cell, you check the row total and the column total. In our case, the row total is eight and the column total is two. So to this cell, we allocate the minimum between eight and two. That means we allocate two. And you take away two here, you get zero. You take away two here, you get six. If there's any row or column which has zero totals, you delete it. So in our case, we are going to delete column one because we have satisfied the demand in column one. We needed seven, we transported five here and we transported two here. That gives a maximum of seven. I mean, that gives us seven. Next, now we have a new reduced matrix. I hope you can see the new reduced uh, cost matrix. And from the new uh, cost matrix, the current Northwest corner cell is this one. This is the current Northwest corner cell. So in that cell, we check the row total, which is six or nine, and we assign the smaller between those two values. You take away the same, get zero there, and you take away six here to get three. And you delete the row or column which has been satisfied. So we have a new, uh, we have a reduced cost matrix here. And from there, the new Northwest corner cell is this guy. And in this cell or to this cell, we either transport three or we transport seven. We transport the minimum of the two. So in this case, you put three there. You take away three, you get zero. You take away three get, and you delete the row or column which has been satisfied. So now we are only remaining with these two cells. We are only remaining with these two cells. So we can just apportion whatever is remaining. So you can apportion here and you also apportion here. So to the first one, to the first cell here, you either transport four or you transport 18. So you put the smaller of the two numbers. So four, you take away four here, you get zero. You take away four here, you get 14. In the last cell, the last cell, uh, we have either 14 or 14. So we just transport 14. And then once we do that, that goes to zero, that goes to zero. Uh, we could delete this and also delete data, but we, we don't need to do that now because we have done all the iterations. 
So now we have a basic solution. Hopefully we have a basic solution. So I'm going to copy this table now without these lines. Then you see a clearer image of the same to see where we have transported and how many units have been transported to various destinations. So this is a copy of the solution that we obtained up there. So it shows that from source one to destination one, we need to transport five units. And then uh, from source two to destination one, we need to transport two units. From source, uh, from source two to destination two, we transport six units. From source three to destination two, we transport three units. And from source three to destination three, we transport four units. So any cells where there are no allocations, it means that here we transport zero units from source one. So from source one to destination two, zero units. From source one to destination three, zero units. From source two to destination three, zero units. From source three to destination one, zero units. The same case here and also the same case here. So the solution, the complete solution will look like this. Will look like this. Huh? So we have, we have X11 is equal to five. That means from source one to destination one is five units. Then X12, that is from source one to destination two is zero units, one three is zero units. Uh, in a similar way, two one is two units, this one. Then two two is six units, we transport uh, six units. Then two to three, we transport nothing. Here. Then 3 1, we transport nothing. 3 2, we transport nothing. And 3 3, we transport 14. You realize that if you look at the allocations, like this is an allocation of five, this five satisfies, uh, satisfies this row requirement. Uh, uh, this 2 plus 6 gives us 8, which satisfies this requirement here. Then these are 3 plus a 4, satisfies this requirement. And this 14 requires, uh, satisfies this requirement here. The same case column wise. Huh? So these are two plus seven, which must give us seven. I mean, two plus uh, five plus two. Then here we have a six plus a three, which is nine. A four plus a, a 14, which gives us 18. So that means that all the row and column required uh, requirements are satisfied or they are met. So how many allocations are here? How many allocations are here? We have one, two, three, four, five, six allocations. So the number of allocations are six. Six. How many rows do we have? The number of rows, which is M, is four. The number of columns, N, is three. So what is M plus N minus one? That is four plus three minus one is six. So the number of our allocations are equal to M plus N minus one. That means we have a basic feasible solution. The number of non-negative allocations, the number of allocations which are more than zero, they are exactly equal to M plus N minus one. So there are six. So we have a basic feasible solution. So after you get the solution, you may want to calculate now the total cost in this case. So the total cost will be the number of units transported times the cost per unit. So the, in these numbers here are the costs per unit. Two, seven, four, one, three, three, five, four, two, two, six, one. Those are cost, the cost of transporting one unit from a given source to, the, uh, to a given destination. So the cost of transporting these five units will be five times two. The cost of transporting these un uh, two units will be two times three. And here the, the total cost will be six times three. And here the cost will be three times four. And here the cost will be four times seven. And here the cost will be 14 times two. Then you sum up that to get the total cost. So once you do that, uh, once you do that, uh, that's what we, are, we have just done. So we, we talk about uh, two, uh, five times two and so on and so forth. So this will give you one, zero, two. So the total cost of transportation is one or two.
that is the cost of transportation. We hope it is the minimum cost of transportation, but you know, you have to check whether that solution is optimal or not using the methods that we, we mentioned earlier. We'll be doing that uh, later. So that's basically the procedure of using uh, the Northwest corner cell method. Yeah, I think the, there was an omission somewhere in our, in, when we were recording the solutions. Um, so we had omitted the, there was a problem with this record here. So this was, I had indicated as three, one, three, two, and uh, three, three, but now they are four, one. I picked this row. So this is what was missing. This is what was missing, but they need to be incorporated in the calculations. Huh? So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I think I incorporated them in the calculation. So the total solution does not change. So that is the initial uh, basic feasible solution using the Northwest corner cell method. So next we are going to look at uh, uh, the least cost cell method. 